And welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston and I'm your host. You are listening to my book, Stairway to Heaven's Door. This book is copyrighted 2023 and all rights are reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced without permission. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Now here's the book. Chapter 3 Seeing in the Spirit I mentioned Pentecost and the rushing wind of the Holy Spirit in the last chapter. When the Holy Spirit came it was to infill the church with power and guide them into all truth. We see in John 16 verses 13 to 14 that the Holy Spirit's primary purpose is to reveal the truth, which is Jesus, and the future. But when He, the Spirit of Truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. In essence Jesus came to glorify the Father, and the Holy Spirit came to glorify Jesus and the Father. They are in perfect union together. We see this in John chapter 17. Let's keep on with learning what it means to see and hear in the Spirit. When we read in John 12 to 27-30a we get such a perfect illustration of how differently we all hear and see in the Spirit. Here is the passage. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered, others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Jesus prays and God the Father answers from heaven. But depending on how mature each person was spiritually then determined how they heard the Father's voice. Let's look at the three ways that Father God's voice was heard by the people. First there were those who heard thunder. These were those who heard and experienced everything through their natural senses. Then there were those who thought Father God's voice was an angel speaking. These people had some spiritual sight, but I believe it was more of an earthly perspective of the supernatural. I believe these are those people who believe in God, but do not have a relationship with Him. This is better than hearing thunder, but ultimately, we want to be like John and Jesus who heard the Father's actual voice in the Spirit. We want a relationship where we can hear God, and Jesus our Good Shepherd speaking. There is another place in Scripture that can help us understand what it means to see in the Spirit. It is found in Exodus 33 verses 7 to 23. Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away calling it the Tent of Meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the Tent of Meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance, while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, They all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance to their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua son of Nun did not leave the tent. Moses and the glory of the Lord. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, 
if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. In this passage we see that when the pillar of cloud came into the tent of meeting Moses was encountering God face to face. This was all done in the spirit. It says that God would speak to Moses as a friend. But then later Moses asks to see God's glory. What Moses was asking was that God would come and reveal himself in a way that Moses could see and experience him with his natural senses as well as his spiritual ones. But as we know God made it clear that Moses could not actually look at his face or Moses would die. We can only withstand so much glory before it will kill our earthly bodies. Jesus says in John 6 verse 63, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. As I've already stated the part that makes us eternal living spirits that can see and experience God is our revived spirit man that is in union with the Holy Spirit. This is the part of us that will be most connected to everything in the spirit realm once we are in the heavens. At some point we will go back to being like Adam and Eve before the fall. We will have a physical body, but it will be something we barely notice. Much like how Adam and Eve didn't even know their physical bodies were naked. Or how Jesus could walk through walls after his resurrection. He could still eat food and they could touch his nail-scarred hands, but he could disappear and reappear somewhere else. I believe it will be a reverse of how it is now with us. Right at this minute most of us are aware that we are a spiritual being and we have spiritual senses, but we do not use them very often, if at all. They are more of a concept than a reality. I believe this is how it will be with our resurrected bodies. We will live our lives at that point from our spiritual perspective and not our physical one. The physical body will be more or less an afterthought to everything else. We want to be fully prepared for the heavenly realms when Jesus returns. That is why we must develop our spiritual senses. We want to be able to see and hear in the spirit. Okay, I've covered a lot of things in this lesson. There are a few more things I'd like to mention. First off, I want to talk about Revelation 3 verse 20. Here is what Jesus is saying, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. If you will notice Jesus says that we need to hear his voice before we open the door to our heart. I think this is because hearing his voice is our first baby steps in experiencing him in the spirit and growing to know him in a deep and personal way. Remember when Father God called to Adam and Eve in the garden after they had eaten of the tree. I think this was the first step to restoring their broken relationship. This is what God does with us as well. When we hear his voice and turn from our own way to follow him then he will show us more of himself. He often does this through his written word. As we study the Bible, we can hear God's voice in the written words. The Holy Spirit again reveals Jesus and God the Father as we take time to learn the scriptures. But the written word is not for us to control and use for ourselves. One time Jesus showed me that there is a huge difference between learning something in your head and experiencing something in your heart. That is why I think it is important to know that the written word was given to us to draw us into a divine relationship, not so we can have a way to appease God with our good behavior in following it. 
The Jewish leaders of Jesus' day knew the word of God thoroughly, and yet they did not even recognize God's Son when he was right under their noses. That is because they were not learning the word of God with their hearts. Instead, they were memorizing it in their heads and following it like a rule book instead of a way to know God personally. Jesus confronted them about this. He told them that their hearts were actually far away from God. He even told them that they were children of Satan. Being religious without God's spirit and his heart is mechanical and empty. Recently, Jesus showed me that it was a religious question that actually deceived Eve into listening to the enemy. The crafty serpent asked Eve a question about God that got her thinking about him in her head instead of her heart. This same thing is the place where the enemy constantly keeps us listening to his voice of accusations and condemnation. If Eve had stayed in her heart, she would have known that God is good and can always be trusted no matter what. When we go back and look at the three illustrations of how the people heard God's voice then we can see why it is important to develop a close relationship with God and Jesus. It was only those with hearts eager to know and love God who could hear His voice. We do not want to miss growing closer to God by ignoring our need to develop our ability to hear His voice in the Spirit. When we study Scripture, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit and allow the Spirit to guide us and teach us what the words actually mean. This is why it is really important to pursue God and learn from Jesus how to hear and see in the Spirit. We will continue this topic in the next chapter. Thank you for listening to my podcast. This book, Stairway to Heaven's Door, Book One, is part of a series. The first book was called Heaven's Door, and the book after this one is Stairway to Heaven's Door, Book Two. And all of these books are on Amazon, so you can purchase them. And they, most of them are on YouTube, so you can listen. All of these books have been written to help you learn how to encounter Jesus. I want to thank you again for listening. Have a great day. Bye now.